Hello, hello, hello. It's Thursday again, it's three o'clock. I'm actually in the kitchen. Gosh, I just wanna thank all of you for watching replays and recorded messages. It's been a crazy, crazy summer. And if you know anything, you know that I've had a little bit of an incident in my home in Calgary. We had a little bit of a flood, so I had to sneak off there last week. So fortunately, we're getting that under control, finally. Oh my gosh, but here we are today, and I'm so excited to be here with you live. So as soon as we've got a few people, let me know that you're here. Oh, hey, Larissa, I haven't seen you in a long time. Season launch, I'm having a season launch in Calgary in, on the 21st of this month because a new catalog's coming out. But let's let's not get too excited about the new catalog because I've got a really, really fun cooking class today. So, oh, and Linda, nice to see you as well. Welcome back. So what I'm gonna do today, I actually made this last night because I needed the TV version because I knew you guys didn't wanna watch me talk forever while it was in the oven. But this recipe is probably gonna take you about 25 minutes in total to make. So yes, hi from Milwaukee, hi from Peachland. Yay, I'm here right now. So I am going to show you how to do, I'm gonna call it the Easy Gals Feta Pie. If you love Greek food, and I love Greek food, um, this is gonna be so easy for you. How many of you are familiar with um, phyllo pastry? Have you ever made, hi Sylvie, um, have you ever made spanaka pita or baklava or at least eaten it? You know that's using that very thin unleavened um, pastry. Well, I'm gonna show you how to sort of do Spanica pita, but not. You know I'll break every rule there is because that's just who I am. So I see a thumbs up. You've been using it. Well, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you a, such a fast way to have such a delicious meal on your table. It's it's effortless. It really, really is. And you are going to want to try this. I am serious. Now I did some prep work in advance, but let's just talk about our feta or not feta, our phyllo. So when you buy phyllo, you can find it in the freezer section usually, and it's in a big long box, and it's really thin. And you do need to make sure that you keep it moist. Um, it'll dry out in a heartbeat. And so what I've done in advance is, I am not gonna be folding it and fussing with it and filling it and all that kind of stuff. No, we're just, we're just cutting it. And the easiest way to cut um, phyllo is with scissors. Yeah, scissors or a pizza wheel. And so I've done most of it already. Hey, Miranda, good to see you. And what we're going to do is we're just going to slice through our phyllo and make strips. So it sort of almost becomes like pastry, but not. Uh, sort of like pasta, but not. And we're going to separate this. And it's important, I mean, does every piece absolutely have to be separated? No, but you don't want a big, huge clump. And you'll, you'll understand why as we're going through this process. So what can I tell you about fun food facts about phyllo? Well, phyllo, of course, is much healthier than, of course, our counterpart, which is puff pastry, which is full of uh, butter fat and a lot of puff. It's really crumbly. Uh, this can be really crumbly as well, but with this recipe, we're not gonna have that issue. So stay tuned, this is gonna be exciting. I made this, as I mentioned earlier, I made this last night as a prep. I wanted to make sure that this recipe was as good as I thought, guilty secret. I had to dig into it a little bit last night just to make sure it was perfect. It's perfect, I wouldn't change a thing. Well, I did have to change the thing. I had to sh shorten how much cooking time there was on it, but I've got it, got it down to a science now. So there is our, our phyllo basically cut up, so it sort of looks like pasta noodles. Set it aside. This, is, by the way, is the medium size of our nesting bowls. If you're looking for nesting bowls, uh, this is what they look like. They come in a uh, set of three. I'm gonna be using a large one right away here as well. So nesting bowls, if you're looking for that. Next, what I'm going to do is let's just get this handled because I don't want to forget. We have a vault list that's, hey, Tracy, good to see you as well. We have a vault list going on right now, and this means that some of the products, when we get close to the end of our season, we put some things in vault, which means 
They're either leaving for a season or they're leaving forever. Please go take a look at my website because the vault list is up and there may be some favorites that are leaving the line. Don't cry. Uh, this is one of them. I love, love, love our mandolin. So I'm gonna be using it again. And if you haven't purchased this already, it's leaving. Go grab it today. There's also another little thing that you might wanna check out, Magic Scoop, okay? The a, a new, new item, we're doing a collaboration this month and I've been using it and I love it. If you wanna connect with me after and ask me more about that, do. But, vault list. So I'm gonna be using zucchini. See, I broke the rule already. Spanakapita really means it translated spinach pie or feta, feta pie, spinach feta pie. Yeah, I'm, I'm using zucchini because good grief, is there not enough zucchini out there for everyone? And then the neighbor and then some. So you probably should use a finger guard. Yes, it comes with one. And we're just gonna shred this. Hopefully you can see this. And you use it like a plunger. I've got the blade that actually slices and dices it. So you can see how nice that looks. Okay, so I've got a green and a yellow one. Do you need to have a green and yellow? No, but it was it was at the counter. I got a little piece left over there. I'll cut that in a minute. Um, I just thought it would look pretty. Why not? I was at the farmer's market. They're the same price basically the same thing and it just looks cute okay so make sure we've got all that off so we are going to just stick this now to clean this I'll, I'll just tell you as I mentioned I love this this is a four in one mandolin and it actually has four different blades so the blade that I use yes it's a little messy right now but you can see it's got really sharp blades here and then of course it's got this sharp blade here so it's slicing and dicing at the same time it's lightweight it's got the finger guard super easy takes up hardly any room in your kitchen which is exactly what you want to make sure because who has that much room in their kitchen for all this equipment that sometimes you buy and then maybe you use once a year so let's get started with the the base okay you probably heard my oven going off I set the oven for 350 degrees and we're gonna be using the saute pan and I wanna highlight, hey, Raymond, Ramon um, and Cindy, good to see you and Carolyn, large bowl. We are actually um, going to be uh, promoting our saute pan and, and I said, I've already baked this already once. I'm gonna sa show you the saute pan, but if you wanna get the saute pan for free and you love Epicure, if you love Epicure and you're already sharing recipes with friends, join my team because we have a fantastic promotion on right now where you can actually join and have the opportunity to get that pan, which is $125 value in Canada, free of charge. So if that's something that you've sort of been toying with, good grief, why wouldn't you just like join the team, really? Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start making our dough, our batter, our, our mix. I don't know what we wanna call it. You know, I've divided this recipe in half simply because there's two of us and I didn't wanna have a meal for eight. I, I thought a meal for four was plenty for two. So there we go. So I've put milk in there. I put two eggs. If you're halving the recipe, I'll put the full recipe up for a family of four so that you know how to do this. I've got feta, and let's talk about feta as well once I get my act together. So I've got that all together. I'm now gonna use my piano whisk. Let's just whisk this first and get my eggs beaten. Um, that's also gonna help me break up my feta. The feta that I use, you can buy feta that's uh, dry and crumbly in a bag. You can also buy it in the brine. I tend to buy mine in the brine, but don't buy too much because the minute you buy feta and it sits in the fridge and you've opened it, it does start going bad. And you have to make sure that your feta is in the brine and yada, yada, yada. So buy the amount that you need. If you, if you don't think you're gonna go through it fast enough, two options, get the drier one because it stays a little bit better. Or, I don't know if you know this, you can freeze feta. 
And actually, when you freeze feta and you, then you thaw it out a bit, it becomes drier and more crumbly, which makes it great for grape salad or something like that, or a meal like this. So we're going to put in some mozzarella cheese. We're going to put in um, our zucchini. How easy is this? Think you can do this? Okay, let's get some seasoning. So what kind of seasoning are we gonna do? Well, come on, I'm a spice gal, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. So minced garlic, if you are not aware of this, this is a pantry staple, you need to have this. Why would you have garlic in a paste in your fridge when you can have this so handy? And half a teaspoon of this is equivalent to um, a garlic clove. I want two garlic cloves in here. That is, that's it. There goes a teaspoon of that. Beautiful. Next, I wanted to get some onion flavor in there. I'm using three onion. Three onion is part of our extraordinary cheese dip collection. Again, it's a pantry staple. I mean, how many times have you chopped onions and found yourself crying over the sink with the uh, fumes and acid that comes from your onion? And you've probably heard, put a matchstick in your mouth and it'll get rid of it or run it underwater, whatever. Buy Epicure, really? Just, just buy Epicure. So I want a lot of flavor in here because let's face it, zucchini and eggs don't have a lot of flavor, so here we go. I'm gonna put two tablespoons. If you like more onion, go ahead, have at her. I would even consider three if you wanted. Now, I do wanna get sort of the Greek flavoring. The three onion is a staple. Thank you, Cindy, I agree. Oh, and there's my mom, Bernice, just joined us. Mom, you're gonna to wanna to make this. It's really good. So now we need to get the Greek flavoring in here. And you could use, I don't know what you have in your pantry, but I wanna make sure that you can use the spices you've already purchased or buy the things that you need. So I'm gonna use Greek dressing. This is for salad dressing, or it's just a big spice jar. So you could use this, uh, or you could use lemon dilly if you, that's all you have, or if you have chicken souvlaki, an open package of that, or maybe our old souvlaki in the jar, use it in this recipe. It will be great. And what we're going to do is, I want some good flavor. I basically want about a teaspoon and a half for the amount I'm using, which is half a tablespoon. And remember, you're cooking. It doesn't have to be that exact. Don't ask me how my baking is. You sort of have to be pretty exact with that to not have a pound cake every time you do some baking and now we're just going to start mixing this I like mixing it a little bit first because once we get and we will be you notice I've got some gloves on here we're gonna be getting a little having a little bit of fun playing with our food today so I'm just gonna mix up my spices making sure I've got lots of moisture because once I put my phyllo in there it's going to totally change, okay? So when you're grabbing your phyllo, this is totally dry. It's not adding any moisture to this. So I would recommend that you take it in batches, like maybe split it into three, and it's, it's really hard to stir. When you're dropping it in, make sure that you're trying to separate those pieces. I notice this one's sort of bound together, which means once I get it in the goop, it's just gonna stick like that, and I don't wanna have a a, a, a clump. So I'm gonna take my hand in here. I, I thought maybe I could use a fork. No, you, well, you can start with a fork, but you wanna get the flavors all mixed in there. And I found, you know what? Just play with your food. So once you've got that moistened a bit and you've got the seasoning in there, grab another clump. And uh, for the amount here, this is a meal for two that I'm making right now, but if you were doing a family of four, you're using an entire package. So uh, using the scissors, when you saw me chopping the phyllo at the beginning, I will let you know that uh, usually when they, you buy them, the, the base is quite thick, like the, when, you, when it's folded. I would encourage you to maybe separate it in half because cutting it with scissors can be a little, little tough. Uh, especially if you have, you know, some sort of wrist problems or your hands aren't as uh, maybe mobile or have the dexterity that they used to. Okay, and you can see how it's binding. Okay, get the last little bit in there. 
And now you can see why I wanted to use my hands, right? It's sort of like baking bread. Yay! Who says, don't play with your food? I'm, ta I'm breaking all the rules, aren't I? How many of you guys dig your hands in your food when you're cooking? I know I quite often do making shish kebabs. So just make sure that you get everything saturated in here. And what we would do, and I'm just gonna show you my TV version really quickly here, is I would pour this into your saute pan. If you don't have our saute, a saute pan yet, you could put it in a baking dish. You could even put it in your multi-purpose steamer. I'm not sure if you're aware, but that multi-purpose purple people feeder that we have, that actually can go into an oven at 450 degrees. And because my oven's set at, at 350 right now, um, it's totally adequate, so you could put it in there. You could probably, I didn't, but you could probably microwave this and make it in a fraction of the time. So. Let me just show you what this looks like. So it's all mixed up. I, I don't have big chunks of phyllo not in there. I've got zucchini all spreaded through. It's ready, ready to go. So what I would do now is just put it in that dish that you're gonna put it in the oven. Make sure you butter it or put some oil in it so it does not stick, okay? Hang on, let me take these gloves off because I'm gonna show you, and I don't wanna have to wash my entire pot, I'm gonna show you my TV version and how it came out, and then I'm gonna sh show you how I'm gonna plate this. So, I made this last night. Doesn't this look yummy? Okay, yes, guilty secret, I'm trying to hide the little spot that I tasted. It's really, really good. So this is how it came out. So let me get out of my flipper here. Um, so you can do it in the pan, and if you've oiled it, it will probably come right out. It is like a feta pie. You could actually cut this. Don't cut it in your pan. You do not want to wreck this pan. This is a non-stick pan. Flip it out. Take a knife and cut it like a pie or a pizza. And put it on a... Plate. I'll just grab my plate here. Okay, so we've got the starts of our meal. Now, you can reheat this. What I will tell you is you're, um, because it, it's, it's drier, uh, and I love it, um, I would encourage you to maybe make a tzatziki. So I'm just gonna slide this a little bit back, and I'm gonna show you how I make my tzatziki with Epicure. So here we go. We've got a little bit of our yogurt. This is um, plain yogurt. Don't get vanilla or any of those other colors. Uh, no. And I'm going to give you a fun food fact about cucumbers. Did you know cucumbers is the plant, uh, the food that we eat that has the most percentage of water? Yes. Believe it or not, this has 96% water. No wonder people always say if you're on a weight loss program, have cucumbers. You're, you're just drinking water, really, or you're eating water. So this was a third of a cucumber that I've got here, and I put it in a strainer, and when I put it in the strainer, I just push it down and squish it. Squish it. I love, when I'm making my tzatziki, I love adding the extra onion, yeah. So I don't wanna overkill it, but maybe about, that's a quarter of a teaspoon there, of garlic, and then I uh, thought I pulled my lemon dilly out, but I don't see it here. Let me grab my lemon dilly. Sorry. I know I have it handy. There we go. Then I'm going to grab my lemon dilly dip mix. And I like putting good flavor in there with the dill. Put that in. Grab a little spatula. I also like putting salt or pepper or SPG in this, but I like breaking it up, making sure that my cucumber is incorporated in there, and then I get those spices rehydrating because remember, everything that Epicure um, carries is very shelf stable because it's very dry. And so we always need to add some liquid to it so it'll add more flavor as it sort of blooms. That's the word I'll use. So, uh, fun food fact. Let's talk a little bit about this uh, 
uh, these pies and so much uh, where they go back to. It actually goes back to the 8th, 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 that's hard to say, 8th century. Yes, believe it or not, this is probably one of the oldest um, meals because of the feta. Feta goes back a long, long, long way. So there we go. So like I said, salt and pepper. So if you have a salt and pepper grinder, if you'd sooner put SPG, do that. Mix that up. I'm just gonna put a little dollop on the top here. I should probably slide it back over for you. Just grab my plate. I'm gonna add a squeeze of lemon here. So if you've got a citrus press, oh my gosh, I love watching cooking shows when they don't have one of these citrus press and they're, I don't know, using their hand and they haven't bought a lemon with a thin rind and they're trying to squeeze juice on TV. I, it makes me feel like I'm a master, but only because I have this. So I just wanna squeeze a little bit of lemon. As I said, I cooked this last night, so it's a little drier today than it was. And then to finish it off, where is my pan? Uh, of course, we're gonna have a Greek salad. So again, we've got that we had, we used up a third of a cucumber in our tzatziki. So what are we doing with the other two thirds? We're making a nice Greek salad. So I've got some tomatoes, some red onions, of course my feta, because I've got that in there, some olives, my dressing. Of course, we need to make sure it's a nice balanced meal. And there you go. This would be your Easy Gal Feta Pie. It is so delicious. I really, really, really hope that you try this. Please let me know what you think because, um, well, A, we're gonna be eating it for a while because I've got a meal for four and there's only two of us here, but I'm going to be enjoying every single morsel. So thank you all for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the cooking class. I will tell you in advance next week, it will be recorded, but it will be a good one. Uh, it has something to do with maybe a future trip that I might be going on. So take care everyone, have a fabulous weekend, enjoy your meal. I hope I helped you making a fast, uh, easy meal and get you, as the sign says, get you outside. The cook doesn't have to be um, in the kitchen. The cook can be on holidays as well. Take care. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.